If you were born in, and if you were raised in a peaceful society, you don't think that somebody will come and take that peace away from you. There will be a terrible war and people will be killed. And I think it's common human experience. Most people, when they see that something is going wrong, decide not to leave. I was the same. My name is Kemal Pervanic. I originally come from Bosnia. I'm a founder of a charity called Most Mira, which means a bridge of peace, which works with children from divided communities in Bosnia. Reconciliation and peace building is going to take decades and many generations. The process leading up to the war didn't take long, five, seven years. So you destroy peace, you dis destroy a normal society so quickly, and it takes such a long time to rebuild it again. I remember once in our history class, our history teacher asked us to identify ourselves by our nationality. He wanted us to say who was a Serb, who was a Muslim, who was a Croat. And this was in the middle 1980s. And most kids in the classroom put their heads down because everyone felt ashamed by his question. So we were Yugoslavs. Things changed. Suddenly there were individuals, academics, some politicians saying, oh, we are too different to live together. It's an obvious sign that something wrong is going on. But how can you believe that your neighbors will try to kill you? How can you imagine that one day you may end up in a concentration camp and that your former teacher, one of your favorite teachers, will become your interrogator and your torturer? It's unimaginable. You suddenly realize that your life does not belong to you anymore. In the camps, every si single day was like a whole eternity because you are not in charge. Somebody else owns your, your life. The process of interrogation started. People were tortured and killed. I was aware of this all the time. You don't ask yourself, why is this happening? Uh, why are they doing this to me? Surely they knew I was not a threat to them. You hope that no one will kill you and the next day you will be released because you want to live, you want to see your family again. It's how we humans are. When you find yourself in that kind of trouble and you know you didn't do anything wrong, you think, well, the world will do something to help us. But of course, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Just because somebody took away all your human rights doesn't mean that some big world power will come to your rescue. My life, in a way, wasn't worth anything to anyone. I guess that's why, in a way, I've become a human rights activist. I'm prepared to deal with very difficult issues that we are facing in everyday life in this world. History can teach us so much, but we keep ignoring history lessons all the time at our own peril. When I came to the UK, I said everything is fine for as long as there's enough money for everyone. When the money runs out, you will blame me because I'm a foreigner. I'm a British citizen, but I sound foreign. <laughs> and I say it because I can see very strong parallels with what happened in former Yugoslavia. When we see what's going on in American presidential campaign, the rhetoric they use is worse than what I heard before 1991. And I say these terrible things don't happen to some strange people, to some other people, they happen to people like ourselves.